and brother Desmond Trotman, and as usual, we'll be looking at issues current in the political and social and economic landscape of Guyana. I want to welcome you, gentlemen, to Walter Rodney
professor. Mm -hmm. We've been talking about the possibility of change. This is one year after the November 28 election.
working class governments would quite be already said they were working class government. So they quite be of the fact of the impact of this on the, on the persons that workers started living of BH payments. They know what they're doing. And I think they're doing it deliberately. Which puts a sham on their claim to be working class. Surprising given the fact that they want at the same time claim to be working class. Is that this breaks down the collective bargaining process? The PS. Once the 
and this like you mentioned just because like touch today I think we should start calling from the minority president because one of the things that we have found difficult to accept is that they lost
enchanted with the government because the government does not seem to recognize that workers have rights and the right to earn is an important right. He was Get 
at that point is even less than they would have actually got if they, they had gotten it over a protracted period or even if they got
said he So they want to 
And then he, he lambes the workers. He doesn't want to see them speaking with the chairman. And uh, they, they shouldn't be taking any decisions from the chairman because the chairman is the political Servants and he went on that any time he sees them even passing near the chairman's office or inside the areas, what's not going to happen and all kinds of things. And so the game of Talk to the minister. Who's that? The average. Yeah. Well, those are things that the minister will be directing. Yeah, but that I'm saying that the average contradicts his position. Yeah. If they do, 
what is going to be of the fate of poor persons a year down the road? A year down the road. And so at some point in time, people have to make a determined effort to stand up against this kind of behavior that is And it shouldn't be allowed to continue. And um, I believe that at the level of the political parties, that we have to find a way of support. does 
something that is against the interests of their constituents that they must even if it means just going to court there are enough lawyers within opposition ranks to pursue these matters in the courts so we must go as Professor Thomas has been advising over and over that we must go to the highest level we must go to the Caribbean Court of Justice and expose these practices I wouldn't work in a place in which it is um, any Persons who is attached to the political administration will tell me, can tell me, and expect that I must, um, I will adhere to it, that I must speak to the political administrators in the in, in
get to be with it and they try to do more, they push beyond the envelope and try to devour your rights. So resistance has to start as an individual action and the individual action after the look, it's certain limits that I'm not going to allow the government to intimidate me beyond these limits. I'm going to stand up and, and demand my rights. In fact, When in the US you do not feel that you are a person, if you do not have those rights, formally and functioning your consciousness and your willingness to fight it with the death of the prison of them. I get the sense that there is some fear of calling workers out. Yeah, I think, I think, and I think the reason for that fear that I'm confident is because they do not believe they'll get And 
it increases the public sector. And then that commission, the union will represent it. And the government will represent it. And I was represented. I was
had to pay the penalty for refusing. But the fact of the matter is that I took a conscious position that to go and cut kids, even if I was a minority one, to go and cut I felt good, I felt better for having made the decision and standing up like a man for the decision. I believe that workers faced with this kind of situation got to take us. What is your take on this continued assault on the
fold legislature at the left
And I do believe that their efforts are challenging the national assembly in court really is to signal to their um, support. already rules against them on one matter and I believe that uh, um, on another matter we should have taken we should have challenged the court's decision um, at the high levels we should have done As Professor Thomas said, the Parliament has the right to regulate its function. And the PPP are fully aware of that. But while it was good for Parliament to regulate its functions, when they were And they are not in control. And so the time we believe that we look. Let me tell you what my, my position on this matter. Um, on these matters. Because As long as the attempt, because what they're doing is stymieing the work of Parliament. Let us understand that. Every time they run to the court, they try to hold up the work of Parliament. And the things that we should be doing in not we not uh, we not doing them as we should and I believe that people who believe that we are right must demonstrate their support of us. We cannot continue. This struggle has to be waged both in and outside of Parliament. It cannot be waged alone. So that I believe, I do believe, and I will say this in Parliament, because 
because I believe that we have to we have to be to go out of the limb and to make the right calls to people. So the government could understand that we take in these matters very, very seriously. There is serious matters and that we are taking them seriously. If the government, because as Professor said, the government talks about democracy and upholding democracy, and they refuse to accept and recognize the decisions that is made in the highest forum in the land. So what should we do? What, what should we do? We should mobilize. We should be mobilizing our support for these positions that we are taking. So that the government could understand that we are serious and we taking and we acting seriously in relation to these matters. That is my position. Okay. No, I think one way in which we can do that. Do that is every opportunity we get. We should point out the contradictions. This government is very particular, very meticulous over the exercise of its authority within the parliament. Look at the case recently with the ship that was picked up in Kyoto. This is the ship which we now told is registered to a guy. I think by now I've been charged and probably prison. Or someone that maybe is not the same.
put the ship in the name of Guyana and call it the flag ship of Guyana traveling around the world. People, countries don't do that as they hide recklessness in an age of terrorism. saying that in the parliament, even though they had a majority over the years, that they never exercised that kind of control which they are seeing this, this minority
that when they use the majority to pass legislation, they always said to the opposition, we don't care what they say. It's we time. And we don't pass these legislation. You have to talk with your one. That is not the opposition's position. The opposition is putting forward very, very valid arguments why it is that these things should not happen in the way in which the government wants it to happen. And That's what we've been doing. Putting forward very valid arguments. And when it is that we use the numbers, and when they talk about the one seat time thing, they just seem to forget that it is at least 10,000 poor combined together to make that um, majority possible combined with a whole, whole lot of other people to make that um, 10,000 at least 10,000 of their own um, previous supporters combined together with other, other people to make that um, things possible. So they must get out in the head that this is a, this is a one majority and understand what it really means in, 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 in numbers terms. That's what they should do. And they should, people must look at the previous records and understand how is it they used to respond. They had the majority idea. But did they ever concede? Can we recollect any of the the issues that they would have or, or bills that they would have that the opposition would have been firmly against, that, that they didn't make any concessions to say, well, look, okay, uh, um, we're going to not uh, uh, railroad the opposition and go ahead with it. Dion, you could remember that at one time, I think it was the AFC who said in Parliament that in spite of the arguments that you raised here, not a place to be in, that this is just a waste of time, raising valid arguments, you know, about why things shouldn't happen, that's what 
that was the opposition. That was the opposition used to meet up with when they had that. Uh,
all the media houses always seem to lay the blame at the feet of the opposition, seeming to suggest that
and the sequestrated and the bubble. They, they can't understand the reality outside the bubble. They look at the situation that we had recently. The minister of human services or whatever it is, man, can, is criticizing people for criticizing. With a Guyanese, you're a Guyanese, you're a Guyana. And she does so by saying that, look, we weren't so critical when other persons were engaged in a Professor Thomas said, 
some of the abusers are still, are still are ministers in the government today. But the, let me tell you something. They're scared. They're running scared. They're running scared. And talking about the elections. They're running scared. And talking about the snap elections. Because if they were convinced that they were in a good they will have gone there already. But they are not sure. They, in fact, they have doubts that they've been convincing enough to their to, to those people who they want to win back. They begin to sense that they're not. Yeah. Too many things the backfiring that exemplary gave you. They thought to the score of a very cheap political point. Against the station. But what is this to Points to be scored against them because everybody now is conscious again that within the confines of this ruling cabal are severe abuses of men, women, children. Boys and girls. And then the lies that they tell can be easily exposed. Of like course. this was the question of how the parliament is being used and their own condom in the parliament. attempt at trying to put the world over people's eyes. Not to work. Not to work. You know, it's really, it's, but it's disgusting because you're using taxpayers' money. You understand? Desperate people clutch the straws, dear. Desperate people clutch the straws. They should be as well as trying to give people a better standard of living than wasting. Time and, and using the state, well, the television that belongs to the people to be that is in the greatest of the sensibly enough that when the time comes for them to vote again, if it is not 
So many years will have passed, we've talked about this thing over and over. People's lives continue to be diminished because if you calculate from How can people be living on 5%? They're satisfied. satisfied to say that because the um, Best describe it, you know. Would, um, but that is their thing, and they don't understand, and they can't see, and they they they, they don't they cannot understand why it is that. People advance a whole set of reasons that got nothing to do with reality. Yeah, but we have also the continued assault and the, the local government we're seeing a similar thing playing out in the city with and the, the council itself where a vote of no confidence was She has to be the person to write a letter to the minister and all of these things. Obviously, she is not going to do that. And uh, at the last meeting, there was some disruption.
every level like so uh, uh, this
get them off the air man, because they, they are using resources that, that should be better used for the development of the people of this I could go for yeah. yes. I, I believe um, yeah. I was one of the persons um, who felt that that she really should be given a chance to see if she can perform. But she is an artist. Clearly, the work is bigger than her. And has a low blue it seconds of her importance and she cannot deal with the problems in fact what has happened is that since she has become the tongue clock the acting tongue clock Problems have become even greater than they were. They want to point to some reputation of um, some trucks that, that were used in the collection of garbage as an important um, development. It might be an important development that uh, that, that thing could have been, in, been for long before she became a I right came to maturity when she became acting on class. But what is happening? Look around and see what the garbage situation is like. Look around and see when um, what is happening in relation to payment. Or when the rain falls. But the problems have not abated since she took over. And in fact, they've 
gotten worse. And if the appointment was intended to improve the performance of the city council, it has not happened. And another thing is that the public must understand the, the, the minister has more clubs than the city council, than the councillors. The minister can overrule the, the council when it makes this. In the interest of the public, people must understand that. And a lot of the times, they miss, miss so much. Who's the minister's representative on the council? Has been ignoring the decisions of the council. And people must understand that when it is that they seek to lay blame for what is happening, that they must look in the direction of the because she is the person who has the, the, the clubs, the power over the lives of citizens in Georgetown. Everything that happens in the city council unless she agrees with it, it will not take place. And they are doing the same and they are DCs. They are DCs. So. And that is a problem that we really face with. I think that is the Well, I, I think there's some problems again that are so huge or so humongous that their resolution has to wait a final
It's been a 